All right. It looks like we are live. How is everyone doing today? Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jason Levine. And for the next 20, 30 minutes or so, we'll see how long it goes today, uh, we're going to be talking about how to monetize video on Adobe Stock. And this is something which I've covered on many of our Facebook channels. Um, good morning, Dana Pride. And the thing is, if you shoot a lot of video, if you shoot a lot of B-roll, um, or maybe you've shot video in the past, whether it's B-roll or not, you just have beautiful video and you want to do something with it, and maybe it's not doing anything right now, well, it's very easy directly from within inside Premiere Pro to upload directly to Adobe Stock to become a stock contributor. When you do that, uh, we're going to use some Adobe Sensei technology to automatically keyword and kind of kickstart the process for you uh, for getting that video accepted to Adobe Stock. You click to, uh, to submit, and that's it. And then you wait, and you wait to hear back to see if your videos will be accepted, and then at that point, you can begin monetizing them right away. Um, so it's super easy, something that, you know, again, in an era where it's all about kind of that side hustle and everything else, this is just a great way to just have another little income stream that's kind of sitting out there. And the more footage you shoot, the more that you can upload, the more chances you have of making some really nice side income from this project. So uh, as always, thank you so much for joining us on Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, I'm just gonna bounce over to our chats here and say hello. Looks like we've got a, ooh, a lot of people coming in today. All right, Claudio, how's it going? B. Zachary Bennett, Ambreen, Ada Fernandez, how are you? All right. Leo Enrique, hello. Kay Chin from Seattle. Andrew Cavanaugh, what's up? And coming to us. All right. Haha, <laughs> what's up? See, every time I look at my phone, this time I go live. Nice. It's good timing. We're cosmically connected, I guess. Danny Alt, how are you? Desiree, how's it going? Thule 3000. All right, great to see you. All right. Uh, and let's see. And Shlomi from Israel, hello. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump over to Premiere Pro, and I'm actually going to do this, so I'm not just sort of talking about doing it, I am going to submit the footage that we're going to be looking at today. So uh, here is some content that I shot, again, just shot 4K with my iPhone, um, which, hey, maybe someone might want. What's up, Eddie Solis? So here we've got this beautiful uh, rainbow. This was from a couple of uh, couple months ago. Shot this right outside my front door. And uh, if you take a look, you know, we're just taking a look at our footage here. Um, it's nothing spectacular, just kind of a pretty rainbow scene. One thing I noticed, you notice there's this nice, beautiful rainbow here. Also, peeking out on the side, there's like a second rainbow here too, which would actually reveal itself a little bit later. I just, I didn't have the camera ready at that point in time. So again, um, is this brilliant? No. Is it uh, the best looking rainbow in the world? No. Is it the best 4K footage? No. Might somebody want some shot of a pan, you know, in a suburban desert area with a beautiful rainbow with this kind of neatly colored sky? Maybe. And that's the key to stock video, stock photography, stock anything. Somebody might want this for some project, right? And if it's pretty and it's well shot and it's well exposed, no reason not to upload it and, you know, give it a shot, give it a try, all right? So here's how this works. It's really this simple. So I've chosen sort of the piece of the clip that I want. Now, first and foremost, for video, your clips have to be a minimum of five seconds in duration, and I believe a maximum of 60, all right? Now, as far as resolution is concerned, um, I assume we still accept things like 720p, maybe, but for the most part, you know, 1080p should be kind of your minimum. That's really what everybody's shooting in anyway. And 4K, of course, more heavily desired like this, just because that's really the new standard. And moving forward, of course, you want to try and upload 6K, 8K, whatnot. I say, go for it. Give it a shot. But at this point, we're dealing with 1080p and 4K. So all the stuff that I have here is 4K. So I've got my footage here. It's about uh, 20 seconds. This is a fairly long clip, actually probably a little too long, frankly. Uh, but it's got that nice pan in there. I did a little bit of color correction. Now, just on color correction, you also have the option to upload flat footage, right? So in stock photography, you know, when you think about when people are searching for images for a, a poster or a magazine or something like that, you know, they're typically bringing in content that's already been color corrected, 
and is already, you know, it already pops, it's beautiful, it's eye-catching, and they're going to sort of integrate that into their existing design. Well, and of course, if they need to make color tweaks and changes, a little bit easier with sort of high-res imagery. With video, of course, if you've got something that's very graded, very stylized, people might love the shot, but maybe they can't really match the color quite as well, or they're not good at grading, or they, they're unfamiliar with our color match feature. So it can often take people longer and can be more of a headache to try and grade something that's already been graded. So stock does allow you, and you'll notice even in my own catalog, I've got a lot of flat footage up there. Should you upload flat or uh, color graded? Well, you can try both. It's entirely up to you. You'll just have to see which ones get accepted or don't. Um, as far as what sells more, I can't really tell you. I, I know a lot of video contributors. And yeah, in general, the stylized ones tend to be sold the most. But if you've got some really beautiful red content or something that is just, you know, beautifully, perfectly shot, can't hurt to try and upload the raw version or the, the, the ungraded version, rather. So here's what we do. I've got my clip. I have, I have the duration that I want. I've done some basic color uh, tweaks here. I'm going to go up to the file menu and go to export media, which will, of course, open up the media encoder. Now, a um, couple things to keep in mind here. Now, this was shot with the iPhone. So in theory, if I'm going to export this because it was already uh, from a compressed source, you know, my sort of go-to would be to export as H.264. This is primarily what most of the content on Adobe Stock Video is. You'll also see ProRes files up there. You'll also see MXF files up there. You'll also see some photo JPEG and some other formats. Um, in actuality, I, I would pause, I, I might even consider, I mean, this shot, it's not the greatest doing something like a ProRes 422 for this. The reason being that the changes that I've just made in Premiere, if I export as ProRes 422, we're not further degrading that originally compressed signal, okay? That isn't cheating, that isn't lying. It's just when we go to H.264, we're recompressing something that's already compressed. So you're gonna lose a little bit of fidelity there. So it doesn't hurt in the case of 4K, um, you know, it kind of behooves you to export ProRes. Having said that too, if I'm someone who's shopping for rainbows in the suburban desert, it's gonna make me feel a little better knowing that my source is a ProRes source, which means I'll just have a little more latitude for tweaking it and messing about with it in my own edit, right? Again, H.264, not that you can't regrade stuff, but you're compressing something that's compressed. So that's not a rule. I'm not saying do it again. I had someone once said, well, isn't that kind of lying about, well, no, right? If we're just gonna upload directly from the phone, I would just do H.264. If I didn't have to tweak it or change anything, I would upload as it is. Because I've added some grading using our 32-bit color effects, because I've added, actually there's a little bit of warp stabilizer on here. Um, you know, the result for someone working and implementing this in their own edit, they're just gonna get a better result if it's from a ProRes source versus a recompressed H.264. Entirely up to you. For, for this purpose, uh, I think, yeah, you know what? I am gonna do a ProRes. Why not? So let's uh, choose our preset here. Uh, first, we have to change the format. So we're going to go to QuickTime. Also worth pointing out, of course, that ProRes import and export now supported in both Mac and Windows. So it used to be, ah, if you're on Windows, sorry, friends, you can't do ProRes export. Now you can as of January of this year. All right, and we're going to give it a name. And I'll just give it a slightly more stylized name here. And we'll call this Arizona Rainbow Pan suburbia. <laughs> All right. Good. Okay. Now, as far as the attributes here, it should kind of keep everything as it is. All right. Here we can even do this in, in uh, greater than 8-bit because we're using our 32-bit color here. Everything else should be fine. Now, there is no audio in this. I'll leave it to export the audio. That's something which people ask all the time. Well, if there's sort of natural sound, do I leave the natural sound in there? You know, 99% of the time, um, no one wants your sound, right? Even if you're recording beautiful waterfalls and things, unless you did some amazing recording of the sound, you know, outside of just using the on-camera mic, nobody wants that. And if anything, if it's in any kind of professional production, they're going to replace it with a better sounding, better recorded version of, you know, um, a cascading waterfall or something like that. If the sound is very indicative of the piece specifically that you're recording and really add something to it, there's no reason you can't include sound. But in general, you're gonna find that most of the clips are silent, just by design, you know? 
people are going to add sound after the fact. And they, here, there was nothing happening, just wind noise. So I have everything muted, but it's just getting exported with that, with effectively a blank audio track, all right? So once we've got all this stuff in here, again, this is kind of matching all the attributes of my original. I don't need to change anything else here. This all looks good. There's one additional thing that we need to do. So inside the Publish tab here, you will see under Publish that we have all of these destinations that you can publish your content to, including all of your favorite social destinations, including things like YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, and Behance. Well, you'll notice that you also have an Adobe Stock option here. So this is what you're going to want to do to automatically upload this content to your contributor portal. By the way, if you've never done this before, is there anything you have to do? Do you have to set anything up? Do you have to pay? No, no, no. If you're a Creative Cloud member, you're already in, using CC, um, you, you can implement this checkbox here. You log into Adobe Stock and it's going to start, it'll start this process for you. There's nothing else that you have to do. You don't have to sign, do any of these things. Log in and just get started. So the first thing I'm going to do here, because this was a, a, I updated my install, I need to sign in. So I'm quickly just going to do that. It's going to ask me to authorize. So we'll do that here. All right. Go ahead and sign in. Not now. Okay. We authorize the app. Boom. And now you can see I am logged in as myself. Okay. Great. So that's done. Basically now, we're done. Now, you have two options for export. I always love to mention this because uh, a lot of people aren't aware. So you can queue, meaning that you're gonna send it to the Adobe Media Encoder, or you can export immediately. If you choose export, that is going to export you in a, 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 via like this modal old school dialog. Now it's gonna use all the resources of your machine to do so, but it might take a little bit, um, but you can't really do anything else. In other words, if you wanted to go back to Premiere and edit, you can't. If you want to go to After Effects, you can switch over to After Effects, but it's going to be wickedly slow because all the resources are being put to the export here. So if you want to do a quick export and you're not doing anything else, I tend to like to do these right here. If you queue it, then you'll have a series of files which are in the queue which can be exporting while you're doing under other things. Now just for this first one here, I'm going to click on Export just so I can kind of show you what's going to happen. So uh, it's going to begin exporting our clip here. Now what's really awesome about this is that not only is it creating the export for us, but when it's done, it's then going to give you the URL so that you can go directly to your Adobe Stock contributor portal, even if you've never been there, which again, if you haven't, by design, this is why we put that in there. So you don't have to start looking for, well, how do I, I guess I go to stock.adobe.com, but how do I get to my contributor portal? This is going to do it for you. So you can see you've got about 14 seconds left. Let it do its thing. Now keep in mind, it has to upload the file as well. So even though you're going to get a URL immediately, your file is not going to show up there immediately. I mean, even depending on length. I mean, I've got, I've got fiber in here. No issues with upload speeds and everything else. Um, but it, it could take a minute. Oh, and in fact, you're, you're seeing here, uh, it's going to take a couple of minutes to do this. So effectively, um, once it's done uploading, it's still going to take a couple of minutes before you're actually going to see that content inside of Adobe Stock. Uh, and this is taking a lot longer to render than I would have thought. Bar flargle. And why is it just cycling? Looks like it's counting up. It's taking a very long time. <laughs> Time to do this export. All right, I may cancel this, but we'll, we'll come back to it in a second here with a shorter clip. Let me just bounce over to Chrome here and just show you what you're going to get and where it's going to be. So once it's uploaded and it gives you that URL and you can click on that URL, it's going to take you here to your contributor portal in Adobe Stock. And you can actually see a series of videos that I've tabled for uh, consideration for monetization. So I've got some shots from Amsterdam, a couple things from the beach in San Francisco. Uh, some shots of Africa, some just random, random things that I was shooting here and there. Now, what happens is once it gets uploaded to Adobe Stock, what's really amazing about this is I mentioned Adobe Sensei. So if you're unfamiliar, Adobe Sensei is our um, AI machine learning technology, which in this case will automatically scan and compare your video to the other 10 million videos that we have on Adobe Stock. And then it's going to do for you the most painful part of the stock contributor process. And this is the most painful part for any, any stock uh, uh, um, service, whether it's Adobe Stock, whether it's iStock Photo, whether it's anywhere else. Keywording, right? The keywording and tagging. This is, this is like, for me, the most painful because 
you need good keywords, you need good tags. What Sensei does is not only does it scan and look at other videos that are similar, but it intelligently uses the most commonly associated keywords with the content that it detects. So if we just take a look, for instance, here at this clip, which by the way, so you can see this is Amsterdam sunny afternoon. If I click on this icon right here, it'll give me a little preview of what it was that we uploaded. Okay, so here's what that looks like. All right. Then down below, you can see it automatically chose the file type video category travel. Okay. Now you can change all of these, of course, but travel sort of makes sense. It's a, you know, uh, again, you have to start thinking about how people might search for your content. Like why would someone buy a clip of Amsterdam? Well, maybe they're doing a travel vlog or maybe they're, you get the idea. So you have to think about the way and the terms that people are going to use to search on these things. The terms are all in English. You can change the language here too. Recognizable people or property. If this is a yes, it's going to ask you to submit uh, model releases. In this case, no. So we can check no there. Now, the only thing that you have to manually do technically is add a title. So I might use something like, you know, Amsterdam, whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to do that because I actually submitted another better version of this clip. And then what you see now in keywords, and you can see, see the 20 remaining, Sensei will deliver automatically I think, I think by default it does 25. It may even be, it may be 20, I can't remember. It's gonna deliver a whole series of keywords for you. So again, based on what we just saw, first keyword is city, okay? River, okay, good. I mean, maybe that's not a river, more of a canal, but that's fine. We can add canal later. Architecture, also good. Bridge, yes. Night, no. So I would take this one out. This is not at night, all right? Now, a lot of schools of thought, some people say, well, you know, put in day and night because then you're likely to get more results. Yeah, but, you know, mm, the way the algorithm, searching algorithms work and other things, uh, you know, if you try and fool it too much, eventually it gets smart enough and then it's diminishing returns. So I tend to not want to add keywords that are completely incorrect. However, coming up, you'll see, I may leave some additional cities in here and you'll see why. So water, good, skyline, okay, cityscape, not bad, travel, good, view, okay, because yes, it is a view from a balcony. So again, someone might say Amsterdam, balcony view, water, canal, and it would return this, okay? Now, curiously, it tagged this as Stockholm, okay? Now, again, I would not leave Stockholm in here. I would type in Amsterdam, okay? Um, but I've talked to some stock contributors who've said, well, you know, a lot of times it doesn't actually matter if people are inserting, like maybe they're doing a video, a travel video on a trip to Europe. So they just want something beautiful with sort of big looking cathedrals and architecture and buildings. So some people will put in different cities if they're sort of similar, right? You might see Prague or you might see Stockholm or you might see uh, Köln or something like that. Again, for me, I tend to think, well, uh, I don't know. This is really just Amsterdam. So I'll leave that up to you. You can do whatever you want there. But again, you might want to experiment because, right, it's not going to upset somebody. This isn't Stockholm. You know, it says in the title it's Amsterdam. So, but just something to keep in mind. Landscape, town, tower. Tower, no. Town, nah. London, see, again, it kind of, sort of, but no. Um, blue, maybe, but that's obviously a term that people search on quite a bit for this kind of content. Blue sky, maybe. Europe, legit, building, okay, sky, urban, tourism, Moscow, again, no, old, again, maybe they're looking for like old cities, Europe, landscape, pan, blue sky, water, right? You have to start thinking about the words that people are going to use and then landmark. And they're really, I mean, uh, none that are particularly zeroed in on or noticeable here. So I'd probably take that out. And then you can add more keywords here. All right. And that's it. And then once you've done that, you're simply going to click on the box here, submit for approval, and you're good to go. Ah, and guess what? Our video is now uploaded. And what you can see, you can see that Premiere is bouncing down below here. Can you see it bouncing? Oh, it's not bouncing anymore. Uh, we just finished our export, and here's our little pop-up. And it just gives us the link to this very place right here, okay? so. Once you're done, it's going to do that. Now we're going to give it a second here because like I said, it needs to get into the system in Adobe Stock, but it'll, it'll get there. We'll get back there in just a second, all right? So let's go to some of these other clips and I'm going to cue these and then we'll start the process. So once again, here's another one. 
shot. Uh, this was shot in San Francisco, all right, from the 42nd floor of the uh, Hilton San Francisco. Now, again, not a lot of stuff going on in this shot. Just kind of a beauty shot, really, but you can see cars, all right? So there's cars driving, okay? A lot of boats. There's, oh, you can see there's a whole bunch of birds and that's probably a little difficult to see because I'm, I'm in a kind of a squished res here. Um, but this is kind of a pretty shot. There's not a lot of stuff going on in the shot, but who am I to say? Somebody might want that, all right? So same thing. We're going to go export media. All right, we'll leave the name as it is for now. We're going to leave the same settings. We're going to publish to Adobe Stock, okay? But this time we're going to queue it, all right? So I'm going to be able to send multiple, uh, multiple versions of multiple timelines so that we can kind of process this in the background. All right, I'll make sure it's at 16-bit. Okay, and Q. All right, that's going to launch media encoder. Here comes media encoder. All right, let me bounce over here. See if we've got any uh, questions real quickly while that's doing its thing. Brian from Scotland, how are you? Delua from Brazil. Oh, thank you very much, Delua78. Buster Reuter from the Netherlands. Nice to see you. Thank you for providing me with such beautiful B roll. <laughs> Yuri, how are you? You didn't know the publish option to stock. See, this is why we do these things. That's wonderful. I mean, I'm sorry you didn't know it before, but great that you know it now, okay? Chris, got to dip out, catch the replay. Ah, oh, thanks again, man. I really appreciate the support. All right. Uh, okay, Shlomi, you're asking, something else important. Is it possible to insert a plugin inside Premiere, noise reduction into Premiere, and not through an external plugin? I mean, picture and not sound. Um, so Premiere does not have a native noise reduction plugin. Um, I believe there's native noise reduction in After Effects. Um, so you could you could uh, um, you could dynamically link your clip to After Effects and perform it there. Having said that, there are many many. Oh well, do we? We actually have VR denoising. That's interesting. Do we have a? We have add noise in noise and grain. Yes, yeah, so we have a denoiser for VR uh, in Premiere, and we have noise addition, but we don't have denoising. My favorite is the Neat Video Noise Reduction plugin. It's been around forever, and uh, it's wonderful. And you know, Red Giant makes denoising plugin. There's lots of them out there. Okay. All right. So this is now in the queue here. All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, let's just start this one. Start it exporting. All right doing its thing, starts encoding, all right? And notice it's got the little stock badge here, so after it finishes encoding, it's then going to start uploading. All right, let's go back here, let's go to the second one. All right, yet another clip this time with a, with a tilt, a little tilt up. There's just some really dramatic, sort of very, very beautiful sky on this particular day, all right? And you can see, I mean, this is, uh, here we are now in 100%. So, you know, is it the most incredible shot? No, although it's a pretty nice shot of the Coit Tower there. But, um, and the flags, I mean, it's, you know, good clarity, uh, decent definition. Again, why not? Maybe somebody wants this. You never know. You never know until you try. So, file, export, media. Now, I believe, actually... Provost 422 HQ max bit depth published to stock. Looks like I already have SI UHD published to stock. Looks like I, or I made, I'm looking for a preset. So this way I don't have to keep checking that box. Looks like I already made a preset. Yep, 16 bit and public. Yep, where I have that Adobe stock uh, option checked. So so that you don't have to keep doing that, um, I be, it would behoove you, it makes sense, to save a preset with your settings. And that's the same for H.264, ProRes, whatever you're doing. Um, incidentally, from within the stock contributor portal, there's an FAQ on what formats are supported, if you're wondering. Um, so, But it's a good idea to just create that preset. So let's go ahead and queue this again. 
send another one to the queue, all right? It just goes there in the background. Back over here, and let's do our third one. Same thing, export, all right? Let's pull up our preset. All right, and publish the stock, good, Q. And there it is, okay? And now what you see is that it is uploading, okay? So that one's uploaded. So here's what I wanna do now. Let's, let's go over to stock. Let's refresh. Oh, I, I don't care. Yeah, whatever, reload. Not saving that anyway, all right? Okay, it's not here yet. So again, as I mentioned, uh, and obviously, um, ProRes file, it's gonna be bigger, so it's just gonna take a minute. I, th this may not appear um, before we're done for today. In terms of our stream, it'll be here today, but just so you know, it, it, it can take a minute before you actually see it in your uploaded files account. Incidentally, um, just to point out while we're still waiting, some of that other stuff is uploading, etc. cetera. Uh, this is a look at my catalog, okay, which is under my um, Twitter name, Beetlejace. So again, you can kind of see here some of the files that I've got up here, right? So here's a 4K, Amsterdam Central, right? At sunset, autumn, European, silhouette, beautiful. Uh, you know, this gives you all the details of the file here, okay? And you can see all the keywords that were used. Again, most of these generated by Adobe Sensei. Um, this is a really beautiful shot, and it, it just it just so happens, again, that day, the light, the clouds, everything, I mean, someone might be looking for this, Amsterdam Central being a very, again, that's kind of a, a, a landmark location, um, that is kind of the central area right there, actually Central is off to my right, to be specific, you can't really see it, but that's how someone might search for this, it is that area, right, you can, uh, you can almost see down the street here, the Dam Rock and Dam Square is just a a very long stone's throw from where I'm standing there. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea. Again, here's some shots. This was uh, in uh, Santa Cruz, okay? And you know, I've got a lot of like landscapes, oceanscapes, um, not a lot of content with analog synthesis. So I've been trying to shoot more of those and pull some of that content up here. Beauty shots, this happens to be my Moog Rogue. Now in the case of something like this, again, I'm not showing the Moog logo. I don't have license to show that. So you gotta keep it a little more neutral here. Master volume, power, oscillator, all those things. That's fine, but I'm not, it's not branded otherwise, okay? Which is why that this, this content is allowed to appear here. Here again, is like a stylized clip. I added some noise and grain and some uh, film, film, uh, um, <laughs> scratches. Could you smell the wood burning right then and there? My brain was going, what are those things called? You see it live, you see it live every day. Okay, here's what I was getting at before. So here's a couple of examples, like maybe there's some more dramatic ones, yeah, okay. So here's some examples of like graded versus not graded content, okay? So here's like a lion which has just some minimal grading, but here's the ungraded, it's the same clip but not graded. So this is the not graded version. And if you look, you can actually see flat ungraded in the description. If you look over at this one, again, same clip, but graded. And they accepted both, okay? Uh, I've also got some, you know, random machine, machinery parts. If anybody's looking for random machinery inserts, B-roll, please check out my catalog. <laughs> okay, you know, versus again, something like this, which is, you know, beautifully graded or, well, so says me, but graded, you know, obviously treated. This might make a nice little insert if you're looking for some sleepy lions in the bush from South Africa, okay? This was HD, this stuff was shot with a Nikon D800. Here's a super flat uh, clip of uh, baby elephant. And uh, I've shown this on another stream where I've graded this this particular clip. I mean, it really just, it really pops. So for this one, I don't even think I uploaded the graded version. I didn't because I wanted to give the user sort of more flexibility. Or maybe is that it? Maybe that is the graded version. Oh, this is the graded one. And I didn't even go too extreme, but you can just see kind of in the details and the the color of the, the flowers and the bushes there. You know, if we kind of A, B the flat right here to the graded one, it just there's just more pop, right? A little more contrast and a bit more light. 
It's a bit soft in the flat version, a lot more sharpness in the graded version. All right, you get the idea. Let's go back over here and see if uh, our clip has appeared yet. Maybe. Aha! And there it is. Boom. So here it is now living inside of Adobe Stock waiting for us. Okay. So this is giving you the preview of the clip, right? With the watermark and let's see how Sensei did. Okay. I'm always curious to see if it can, if it can pick the city. So here's the keywords that it came up with. All right. So we've got city view architecture panorama. Good because I am panning, right? Uh, landscape. Mm, okay. Maybe, maybe not cityscape. Okay. Sky skyline, urban, good building panoramic Europe. Okay. No buildings, town, travel, Barcelona. Okay. No Paris. No blue tower, roof, sunset. Okay. Tourism, Italy. No aerial. Mm, maybe. Mm, I mean, it's not, and I don't know if someone would consider this aerial if they were searching on it. I'd probably take that one out old. No. So again, in the keywords here, you know, San Francisco, and then maybe I'd write tenderloin and maybe I'd write union square. Okay. Etc. Etc. Probably add some more. Give it a title. You got to give it a title. No recognizable people or property. And then once I give it a title, I'll, I'll augment this later. I submit for approval. Now you want to be sure you got to work. If you're having trouble, look at other titles that people have used for similar content. Look at other things that other users have have done in terms of titling. It's really difficult. I would highly recommend my colleague Terry White, terrywhite.com, terrywhite.tv, youtube.com slash it's either Terry White or Terry L. White. You can find Terry all over YouTube. He's got a great video about contributing and keywording and titling and sort of how you what you really need to do to get this content found. It's so important. It's it's the equivalent in stock of the thumbnail on a YouTube video that drag, you know, that draws attention. You got to have the right wording for the titles. That's kind of the key. Otherwise, it's just never going to get seen, right? We've got tens of millions of pieces of content up there. How is yours going to stand out aside from just being good? You got to have the right keywords and the right titles. The keyword sensei is going to handle at least most of it for you, but the titling is up to you. So that's kind of the main, the main element there. All right, let's see. So, uh, so far, okay, we've got this other one. Oh, let's just, uh, duh, I didn't cue the others. Okay. So the other clip of our sunset clouds has been uploaded. Let's see if that one is available just yet. Reload. Oh, it is. Duh. That's what I was looking at. Oh, and here's the, <laughs> Was no one going to say, but wait, you missed the rainbow clip. Here's the rainbow clip. Okay. So there's the rainbow one. Nice. Okay. So both of those already up there. Like I said, the other one, it was a lot shorter. It uploaded and got there a lot faster. Okay. So let's see what this one did. I'm curious. Sky, sunset, blue tree, dusk, water, evening, beautiful summer, horizon, storm. Yeah. Cause those were, it was post storm clouds. And that's the kind of thing, right? I wasn't even thinking of, oh, of course, a rainbow following a rainstorm, but that's what someone's going to be looking for. Weather, orange, horizon. These are, these are great. These are great keywords. And I just, I wouldn't have come up with them. If stock were my business, I might come up with them, but that's not my thing. So I, I try to do it, but it's not like I don't do it every day. So that's why this is so useful. It really kind of just jump starts, And then you can start to think of even more, right? And honestly, you just want really good keywords. Okay. And that's it. Being a stock contributor. It's as easy as importing your content into Premiere Pro, treating it if you need to do some color, do a little color grading, do some correction, do some, uh, you know, if you've got blown out high, if you want to fix some highlights or lift some shadows, whatever you have to do to make it look better, do that. Stabilize if need be. Once you've got your clip done, uh, hold on a sneeze. <coughs> That was it, just one. Once you've got your clip finished, right? File, export, media. Export to your format of choice. Again, you can find the supported formats from within the FAQ in the contributor portal. Uh, choose your format. Uh, 
You can export with the export button to do a modal export, but that's gonna prevent you from doing other things. If you then click Q, it will send it to the media encoder, which will then do all that work in the background. And as mentioned, whether you're in the uh, modal export or with the media encoder, when it's done, it's going to give you the link to go directly to your uploads so that you can begin the process to submit your content for consideration to be monetized. It is worth pointing out that there are still humans, there's some AI involved in the, in the selection, but there are still actual people who have to review your content. And if it gets rejected, hey, that's part of the game. You're not alone, okay? Uh, if we go to mine, you can actually see rejected. Would you like to save, re yeah, okay, fine, save the changes. It's going to reject it, all right? So here's uh, a bunch of my clips that got rejected, all right? And it, it oh, it even tells you. <laughs> You're gonna get to see. So I had this clip here, to, I, it's not letting me view the clip. All right, this was just like a beauty shot. It was on a, uh, a balcony railing with some rain. There was some nice shallow depth of field. And this was, it wasn't accepted. And the reason was, unfortunately, during our review, we found that it doesn't have the aesthetic or commercial appeal we're looking for. Oh. You know, too bad, whatever, all right? Here's another one. Uh, so this one, uh, it appears similar to another video you've already uploaded, all right? So maybe they took the graded version of this and not the flat version, that could be the case. Um, so this one, unfortunately during the review, we found that it contains one or more technical issues, unintentional shaking, empty frames, compression or audio issues. So again, it's going to tell you, if you've done this with photography, it's the same, too grainy, too noisy, uh, blurriness, whatever, you know, this is going to, again, also school you on the things you need to keep in mind um, when uploading your content. So don't get discouraged if you get a bunch. Um, I mean, to be honest, this is all the ones that I've had rejected, which looks like, what do we got? One, four, five, six, we got about, uh, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, we got about 24 clips here that were rejected uh, out of a total of 90 or something. So, you know, that's not so bad, right? And again, a lot of them were duplicates. You can even see like in the case of these two here, this is the same clip, graded and uh, ungraded, but admittedly it was, it, it was soft. It wasn't very sharp. It was a great clip of the Great Pyramid of Giza, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, attractive enough, so it didn't make it. That's fine, all right? Don't get discouraged. All right, so that's it. Pretty awesome. Okay, let's bounce over to the chat. Take some questions. Again, if you're looking for clips of machines or animals in South Africa, I'm happy to announce that I have the only content of hyenas in the, at night in darkness. If anyone's looking for some hyena content, I've got some wonderful shots of hyenas. <laughs> well, I think there's one where he's opening his mouth. Or is it this one? That one, okay. It's not great, but if you're looking for a spotted hyena at night, I'm the only one. <laughs> These haven't sold yet, by the way, just so you know. So clearly not a, not a huge call for that, but um, maybe someday. All right. Okay. WC Shields. Ah, nice to be home early and watching it live. Thank you so much. Adrian Vega from Mexico, how are you? Andreas Kahl from Germany, hello. Ada, oh, thank you very much. The colors are looking great. Mariana Ludford, how are you from London? Pataki from India, great to see you. Mariana, looks like Richmond Park. <laughs> very cool, all right. Yael Najem from London, hey. Andrew Kavanaugh, what app do I recommend for live streaming? So I, uh, I use Wirecast, um, Wirecast Pro. If, uh, you know, uh, to be honest, if if uh, and the reason for that is because I tend to have a, I have a bunch of different devices and things feeding it, and it's a very specific way. And it, Wirecast just gives you every possible option, but it's expensive. Um, it's worth it, but it, there's a cost involved. Uh, if you don't want to go Wirecast, OBS. You know, OBS is free. It's great for the first year and a half, two years of streaming. That's what I used when we were on Twitch back in the day. So um, OBS is great. You know. Um, I, you know, they're both great. And again, they, they both have their advantages too. OBS actually, uh, for my money, better, faster, more responsive audio metering. And Wirecast tends to, um, there's something else happening in the audio chain there where I can 
I know because I've watched back. I, I tend to get some distortions when I get excitable here. I don't have any compression inserted. I don't want to do that. It changes the sound. I don't love their native effects. Um, doesn't matter. But so there, there's there's little differences and thingies in each that I you know love more one or the other. But um, Wirecast, to be honest, is really really wonderful. And OBS works great too. And yeah, we'll study OBS. And honestly, uh, Andrew, it's so easy. Like it's plug and play. Really install it. Um, the nice thing about OBS, too, is that, you know, and you can do this with Wirecast, I suppose, but if you're streaming from one system, I recommend using a dedicated system for streaming. Um, you uh, you definitely want to, you can install uh, something called Soundflower, which OBS works really well with, which will allow you to kind of, you know, uh, loop all audio through the, through the output of the stream, which just makes life e easy if you don't have a secondary system. It works really well, all right? Lauren Burden, hello. All right. To run Premiere, do you rec what do you recommend for a computer? Recommended specs, David Santifano. So, you know, it really depends on, uh, on what you're doing. I mean, uh, if you're going to be working in, you know, 4K, I mean, look, the, the truth is recommendations for any kind of system uh, are always going to be a powerful one, right? Uh, if you're just going to cut video and you're not you're not grading or not really doing anything, you know, if you look at our minimums, I don't even know what the minimum requirements are for RAM. It's probably eight gigs or something. You know, that's that is a minimum, minimum, minimum. All right. Alex is live streaming. What is free? OBS is free. OBS. Um, I would say recommend it at a minimum, whether you're doing 4K or whatever. You know, again, 1080p is what most people are working in, right? You want to have 16 gigs of RAM. It's just going to make the experience better. Can you do it on eight? Probably. Is it going to feel awesome? Maybe. All right. And we have lots of things in Premiere that will allow you to make playback and other things smoother and more efficient. But if you really want that delightful feeling, 16 gig RAM minimum. All right. Video card, you got to have at least two gigs of dedicated VRAM to really take advantage of our GPU acceleration. Um, I think maybe it'll work with less. I don't know in the more, more recent versions. I'm not entirely sure. But um, minimum two gigs, really, uh, of dedicated VRAM, which, again, all new machines have this. That's nothing new. Um, and then, you know, again, in terms of drives, I mean, there's so many things to consider. I use all SSD. Anyone will tell you, of course. Yeah, that just makes file access and everything else better, smoother, faster. SSDs, though, in large capacities get pretty expensive, although they're way cheaper now. I've got a two terabyte SSD native on this iMac 5K with an additional external SSD plus a 12 terabyte spinning RAID, which I use to kind of offline footage, offload footage to, and eh, it's kind of a, an in-progress drive. So um, lots of things to consider there. And then, of course, people always ask, well, Mac or PC? Well, you know, you can get a lot more bang for your buck in the PC world. So, you know, if you want to build it from scratch, you can rock a little harder, you know, um, and probably spend less. It just uh, it just really depends what you're going to be doing and what you're going to be using it the most for. All right. Can I have two hosts with OBS while live streaming? Um, I if you mean, can you? Uh, OK, so so with Wirecast, yes, you have this virtual option where you can very easily bring someone else in and kind of co-stream if that's what you're thinking about. It's really easy to bring in like Skype streams and other things. You can probably do that on the OBS side. I, I, I never did it there, so I don't know. For certain on, on Wirecast, again, I don't know specifically what you're asking, but I'm assuming, Andrew, that's what you mean because, yeah, we've done like where I'll bring in Terry's brought me on on his stream virtually. Uh, really easy to set up in Wirecast. Works brilliantly. I've never done it in OBS. You probably can. I'm not sure, though. You'd have to check. All right. Hami Kapoor from New Zealand. Thank you for joining. All right. All right. Aunt Pruitt, what's up, my friend? <laughs> Yuri, hyena in the dark. Oh, Shlomi. So who decides what will be the price of each clip? Maybe I missed that. Ah, that's a great question. So um, the default for HD, it's a standard. It's $79.99. For 4K, it's $199.99. And uh, what I can tell you, I haven't sold any 4K clips yet. <laughs> I only started uploading 4K a short while ago. But here's the thing, for 1080p, we pay a lot. So your commission on a $79 1080p clip is 
U.S. dollars. That's a lot. And if you consider what the, con- the commissions are, which are also we pay a lot for, Im- for images, a still, you got to sell a lot of stills to make 28 U.S. dollars. One video will give you 28 bucks. So that's why, again, it's a volume game. The more you've got up there, the more that you have available, the more that people can search on, the more chances you have of selling and the more money you're going to make. So, um, but the prices are preset. All right. All right. And you're, you've got some rejected videos too. See? All right. Not bad. And Sensei's gotten pretty clever with keyword suggestions. It's it's pretty good. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little upset that it didn't pick San Francisco. In one of those clips, in one of the last times I did stock, it detected like San Francisco, it detected Amsterdam. You know, it's it, the engine, it's it's random, so you never know. Um, but it really does a good job of getting you very close in, in a lot of the way there. For my life, is Apple ProRes a better option for exporting than H.264? Look, as I mentioned, if you're going to shoot in a compressed format like H.264 and the footage is perfect as it is, in other words, this is the clip you want and you can you want to upload to stock. By the way, you don't have to go through Premiere to do all of that. You can also upload directly through stock. But um, even still, you can upload the H.264 if you're not changing it. There's That's fine. Most people work with H.264. Because I graded and did some other things and I was leveraging these 32-bit effects um, and I didn't want to degrade it further since it was already an H.264 clip originally, I exported it as ProRes. Um, All that means is that the person downloading what I saw in my timeline is effectively what they're going to see. No worse, no different. They're not getting any more latitude based on the way that it was shot. I mean, it wasn't a raw clip. Right? It was it was H.264 by nature. So it, it really depends. I prefer getting ProRes content only because I know that I can push it and do a little bit more to it without it degrading as quickly as something like an H.264. Also, the performance is going to be a little bit better in terms of playback and other things if I don't use proxies. So it kind of just depends on what you're looking to do there. All right. And we'll go to Periscope here. All right. What's up? Blogger Fangirl, Ice666, Tony Harmer. All right. Oh, a lot of people on Periscope today. Thank you so much for joining me here. Manir Bryan, David Presenter. Okay. Is Adobe stock free? Well, so to become a contributor is free. The content is not free. All right. Ant Pruitt, does video commission depend on if the customer is a subscriber or just a flat sale? You know, Ant, that's a fantastic question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, hmm, that's a great question. I will have to find out for you offline. I'll, I can find out, though, so I'll, I'll ping you on Twitter about that. I'm going to guess that it's probably the same commission. That would be my guess. Would it make sense for us to pay you more, though, if the person who bought it was a, was a member? Hmm, it might, but I don't know. Let me find out, but that's an amazing question, all right? Thank you for that. Okay, and it looks like we have anything else here? All right, nothing else here. Hello, Nadine. All right, nice to see you. Okay, well, that's it for today, friends. Hope you've enjoyed this stream. Hope this has encouraged you, inspired you to start contributing your beautiful content, right? You've got, you've got amazing eyes. When your eyes are through that viewfinder, you shoot incredible stuff. Share it with the world, right? That's what stock is all about. That's what Adobe stock is all about. Sharing your vision, literally, figuratively, with the world, okay? So thanks so much for watching. Again, you'll be able to watch the replays on Twitter, Periscope, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Have a great weekend, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Sapiosexual, don't go anywhere just yet. (laughs) Do you have one more question? I could stick around for a few more seconds. You just got home. Oh, well, you can watch the replay. All right. (laughs) Unless you ask me very, very quickly. All right. (laughs) That's why I love live. Foe my life. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. No more questions? We done? Shield on 55? Thanks for joining. Okay, that's it. I'm going to go have some lunch. Have a great rest of your... A great rest of your day, wherever you are in the world. Oh, they say, but no worries. All right, thank you. Have a good one. And uh, I may decide to stream a little later today. I may just an impromptu one. I've been working on some music stuff. So if you want to see some mixing, 
if I go live in an hour or two, that's what I'll be doing. So if you're interested, come drop by. would love to have you there. Thanks again and uh, have a good one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.